Hi and welcome. I'm Lily and on my channel I talk about books. Today's question is what happens when two completely different worlds collide and suddenly love comes into play? That's exactly what Heartbones by Colleen Hoover is all about. So let's take a look. Again, I'll follow the order basic, bullet points, author, summary, impression, conclusion. You can find the timestamps in the description box down below or up here, so you can jump to the specific topic if you like. So let's start with the bullet points. Heartbones by Colleen Hoover is a young adult contemporary romance. It was self-published in August 2020. The book has 336 pages and the reading time is around four hours. A similar book is The Heart Count by Ginger Scott. That's to the bullet points. Let's go to the author Colleen Hoover. In this video I'll talk more about personal things I found and gathered on the internet. If you want to know more about Colleen Hoover's career, check out my previous video Verity. There you'll learn quite a lot about this interesting author. Colleen Hoover was born 1979 in Sulphur Springs, Texas, as the older of two girls. She is an international best-selling author of romance, thriller, women's fiction, paranormal romance, and regularly tops the New York Times bestseller list and is a TikTok sensation too. I didn't set out to become a best-selling author. Um, I just kind of got into it at the right time with a lot of good luck and good timing. I'm very interactive with my readers. Um, I have a very active Facebook group um, with about 13,000 readers in it. I use it mostly as a way to interact with the people who have already read my books, as a way to thank them. She has loved reading since she was a child and wrote for the school newspaper. And before her first romance novel slammed, she actually never read romance novels. But since then, contemporary romance has become her favorite genre. She says she's not a great planner and not organized at all, so she hasn't a fixed writing time or writing schedule, but she prefers to work at night. Her husband and her three sons support her so she can develop creatively. She writes what she feels at the moment and doesn't let herself to be squeezed into a specific genre. The most important thing is to write your books because you love to write. I try to write my books in a way that I'm happy with them, whether the readers are happy with them or not. Luckily, they've um, you know, been very happy with them so far. And she's a so-called outliner, which means she writes a lot, a lot of things that don't end up in the final book. So she says she writes a book about four times before it's finished. And when a novel is finished, her little sister is the first to edit the book. Colleen Hoover is very proud of her clever sister who speaks many languages and works in the book industry too. So among other things, she created and designed this beautiful cover of Heartbones, which I like very, very much. So now let's go to the summary of the story behind the cover. <laughs> This story is about 18-year-old Bea, who lives with her junkie mother Janine in a trailer park in Kentucky. They are desperately poor because every cent is used for the drugs of her mother who never cared for Bea. So she learns to be independent and take care of herself from an early age on. Free time is something she doesn't know because Bea does everything to escape the misery she lives in. If she's not working in a fast food restaurant, she's practicing volleyball and is so good at it that she even got a scholarship to a college in Pennsylvania. And then one day her mother dies of an overdose and Bea is kicked out of the trailer because of red debt. And now she has only one option left. She reconnects with her estranged father who lives in a different state and whom she hasn't seen in three years. Previously she spent two weeks a year with him but she feels abandoned by her father and believes she is only meeting the alimony payments out of a sense of 
obligation for the daughter that resulted from a one night stand. Therefore, when he calls, and he calls regularly, she never tells him about the bitter circumstances she lives in. And this time too, she doesn't tell him the reason for her call. Without hesitation or much questioning, her father pays her a plane ticket to Texas. He's recently married and lives with wife Alana, she's a dentist, and stepdaughter Sarah in a fancy beach house on a peninsula of Galveston. And Bea enters a whole new world, the world of the rich and beautiful. Because she has only told her father lies about her life so far, she now decides not to tell him or anyone else about her mother's death. Bea remains reserved and suspicious because so far she's experienced almost only the ugly and bad sides of people and practically no love. She feels the most anger for the rich people who seem to know no sorrow. Only slowly does she open to her father and his family who welcome her with open arms, especially the cheerful Sarah, her new stepsister, takes touching care of her and does everything to make her feel comfortable and soon Bea has to drop her quickly made prejudices about her. Sarah takes her into her circle of friends, which also includes the rich neighbor Samson. And Bea's first encounter with him was ill start because of a misunderstanding, but the more time she spends with him, the more she senses that underneath the facade of the sunny boy is a deep person who seems to carry his own sin and demons. And the more she gets to know Samson, the more she falls in love with him and learns that he too is holding a secret. That's everything I'm gonna tell you about the story. Let's move on to my impression. I like the relentless narrative style, especially at the beginning of the story. One is immersed in the rundown environment of the trailer park, feels Bea's gnawing hunger and senses her daily struggle to survive in this harsh environment. But most of all, I felt her inner anger and hopelessness and rage at this unjust world. I like how strongly Bea is portrayed, the strength and the will she has to go her own way. She doesn't go through a lot of inner development. Her character is already very strong from the beginning and much more major due to her past than other girls are at that age. Rather, the development is on an emotional level. So at the beginning of the story, she's that hostile girl who is angry at everyone and everything and lets everyone feel it. She dishes it out and is marked by prejudice. As the story progresses, however, she opens up and softens and thus makes herself more vulnerable, which I liked a lot. The narrative of this story is plot driven without unnecessary filler scenes. It's tightly told and has a good length. The language is kept simple and easy to read. I read through the book in one go. There's a good arc of suspense that slowly builds and carries through to the end because of Samson's secret. And the twist at the end really surprised me and of course I wanted to know if there would be a happy ending for Bea. I also love the relationship that builds over time between Bea and her stepsister Sarah and also the relationship between Bea and Samson is beautifully and plausibly told. But I find it a pity that the relationship between Bea and her father isn't dealt with more and also that of his new wife. So these characters seem one dimensional while there would have been so much more potential in it and would have given the story more depth. And I was also irritated by the fact that Bea repulses her father so much even though he actually always made an effort for her and always called. And until three years ago she was regularly with him on vacation and should have felt that he cared for her. And that is not very credible. Also the fact that she keeps her mother's death from him for such a long time 
is not understandable because there would have been so much more potential to come to terms with the past. Since the story is told from the first person perspective, we get the relationship Bea builds with Samson all the more. Due to Samson's quiet nature, this character seems a bit distant and I would have liked a little more closeness and more of his perspective. But all in all this story is very realistic with a few exceptions mentioned previously and the somewhat cheesy ending is cautioned by Bea's strong character and related actions and the decisions she has made for her future which were influenced by her encounter with Samson and which she is fully following through with. With a fairy tale ending to this emotional story about two people who have to balance over the prickly and hard parts of life without a safety net because the system has failed them, I thus also conclude my impression and go to the conclusion. It's a contrasting love story with inclusion of difficult themes, suitable especially for younger girls. The underlying tone is melancholy and bittersweet and thus hits right to the heart. I really enjoyed this book and can only recommend it. I give it 4 out of 5 stars. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Hope to see you soon. Until next time and take care. Bye.